Hey everyone, and welcome to the Nintendo Fuse podcast. Here we are in episode 170, entitled Nintendo's VR Future. My name is Steve, I'm your host, but I am not alone. I am joined today by our regular podcast crew of Greg. Hey Greg, how's it going? Great, how's it going everybody? Let's talk some games. Yeah, and we are also joined by Barry. Hey Barry. Hey guys, glad to be here. So uh, yeah, it's been it's been a couple weeks. Uh, we've kind of had some news, not a whole lot of news. Uh, one big news piece that we're going to get into uh, a little bit later on, but 170 episodes, guys. That's, you know what that means? You guys know what that means. It means we've been talking about games for a really long time. Uh, but it's great. It's always it's always great to join you guys and and chat about games on a Monday night and uh, and join you guys in the chat room as well. So many of you are are always there present uh, joining in the conversation and we love that so if you are watching live be sure to you know toss your thoughts about anything that we talk about in the chat room if you're watching later on youtube or if you're uh, tuning in later on your podcast app of choice be sure to leave us a comment or something like that uh, to let us know what you think about the new stories that we talk about and what you've been playing lately um, but before we do jump into any of the news, we do want to also remind you, follow us on social media, follow us on uh, YouTube, hit the bell to be alerted by all the new videos, all that stuff. That'd be awesome. Subscribe and share us with your friends. And uh, we would be very grateful for all that. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to get into the news in just a bit, as we normally do. But as we also normally do, let's talk about what we've been playing. What's been occupying your your Switch or perhaps maybe your 3DS. I'm not going to count it out just yet. Maybe you have, but maybe I'm not going to count it out. I, I still see my 3DS every once in a while. I, I may not play it, but, I, but I, do, I, I do visit it every once in a while and, you know, caress it and say, you know what? Maybe everybody else has forgot about you. I've not forgotten about you. I maybe haven't powered you up in like two years, but I haven't forgotten about you. You're still there. So, Greg, any 3DS love, or has it all been Switch the last couple of weeks? Just Switch and Mobile is the normal <laughs> name of the game. But I do have to say, mine was powered on just the other day. I was cleaning through my drawer, and I must have accidentally hit the power thing. I saw the little lights on. I was like, <laughs> like it's, I haven't charged you in like over a year, and you still got batteries. So what's going I on? I love that you <laughs> accidentally turned it on. <laughs> It's like I must have bumped it or something. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So uh, so what has have you been playing? I mean, I'm assuming uh, you've probably been playing some Fire Emblem, maybe uh, maybe a couple other games on mobile, but uh, what, what have you been playing? Well, I did uh, load up everyone's favorite uh, game of the year, Paw Patrol, on roll. Me and Bell were having some more fun. Did a couple more missions this week, so glad to be continuing going through that. I don't know how many more are left. Hopefully we're close to the end. But we've already done ten plus Hopefully. missions. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, this game ends. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, yeah. D let's dive into that. Hopefully, a little more. Is that because you're just like, you know what, I'm going to move on, or you're like, I can't wait till this thing is over? Well, yeah, it's. I guess it's more. Can't wait till it's over. I mean, she'll probably still want to replay the missions as like any like, toddler just likes to rewatch the same episodes on TV, and you can, that replay can't... value is high for a toddler. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, hey, we didn't do this mission. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, so just Paw Patrol? Yes, unfortunately. I did want to try to start up 12 as the new 6, but I didn't manage to power it up yet for that. But I did like download it, and I have it all set and ready to go. Um, and then I had anticipated to try to play Smash Brothers, but that just didn't happen. Nice. Nice. Barry, how about you? I have not touched my Switch in, God, about a week or so, a little more than a week. Yeah. Uh, last things I was playing, I was playing Treasure Stack and Battle Princess Madeline. Um, but outside of, of, of that, uh, I, I've still been doing mobile on uh, Dragalia Lost uh, and Pokemon Go. But uh, what little time I've had, uh, a friend of mine wanted to start a new... Uh, free company or guild on Final Fantasy XIV, so I've devoted all my time there that I've had to help her run it and help her get things off the ground, and and uh, that's taken up more time than I thought it would, but it's kind of nice because it's kind of rejuvenated my interest in that game, and uh, with, with Shadowbringers on the way, I, I'm having fun again, which is good. It's no longer the grind. It's just meeting new people and talking to new people and making new friends, and I love doing that. That's cool. 
That's that's nice. Yeah, I do wish. Uh, like, I, I, at some point, I do want to get into uh, one of those games, but at the same time, I I need a, I need to find a, a free one because I, I haven't felt good about ponying up all that money yet. Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen actually does have a free trial. Ooh. I think you can get to twenty five or thirty five uh, with each class. Uh, you can't do everything. Like, you can't join a company. You can't. I don't think you can even send tells to people, but you can at least try out the game. Oh. And I think that uh, you should do it. I really do. I think you'll like it. Cool. Cool. And you play it mostly on PC, right? Uh, yeah, I do play on PC. But I use a gamepad because it's designed for a controller. It was designed yeah. for the PS3. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, you need to, you need to look that up. You can do uh, keyboard mouse if you want that, too. Both yeah. options are there. I prefer to use a controller. <laughs> yeah. I, I just use a little, I'll even show you, I use a little level. It's like a $25 Logitech PS2 style controller. Hmm. Cheapo, nothing huge, USB. Cool. Surely you mean a Super Nintendo controller, right? <laughs> well, it's a Super Nintendo controller with two you know, <laughs> RL buttons and the, the analog, two analog sticks and the, the analog sticks click in as extra buttons. Nice. <laughs> nice. So it's almost a Super Nintendo controller, much like a PS1 controller is almost a Super Nintendo controller too. That's true. It's almost like they were connected in some way. Yeah, only if there's a history there between the two. Maybe we'll have to figure that out for a new podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have been playing Rocket League as well. The uh, next uh, Rocket Pass is almost uh, wrapped up, I think. Actually, maybe it was yesterday or today, I think. some Sometime really soon, uh, Rocket Pass 2 is up. So I was uh, playing. They had the double uh, XP weekends and stuff like that. So I've been playing a lot of Rocket League and and uh, I think I'm my my switch account I think is finally up to like level 86 or something like that. So far from you know topping out at 200, but uh, made up a lot of ground in terms of my level um, over that that weekend. But uh, yeah, it's kind of cool and unlocked a lot of stuff. So uh, Rocket League is one of those one of those games. I was talking to a friend the other day um, and actually a couple of different friends and they were asking like, what's those games you keep going back to? Um, even when like, you know, you want to play other games, but you keep playing, like, coming back to that one game and rocket league is, is that game for me. Um, so I kind of always find time for that. Um, and I've been playing, uh, and actually reviewed uh, a game called beholder, um, the completed edition. It's, uh, it's been actually out for, I think a couple other consoles as well. And, and the complete editions, out, out on a couple of the consoles too, but um, I've been playing it on Switch and did the review, and it's a it's a weird game. Um, it's I enjoyed it. I was surprised that I enjoyed it, but uh, but it's a, it's a weird game. It's like this. I don't know. If, are you guys familiar with Beholder at all? Not no. the game. I just think of Eye of the Beholder. Yeah, my old school D and D games. <laughs> right. So this is it's it's kind of odd. It's uh, so you play. It's like a simulator in a way. Um, but it's like 2D, so kind of similar to a lot of other like PC games, um, like indie games, where you have this side view and uh, you are in control of this this house. Basically, and you're the you're the landlord, and you've been placed there. You're in a in an, in an area where it's like governments in control of everything, and you basically are faced with a bunch of different moral decisions. Do you actually follow what the government tells you to do? Or do you follow your heart? Or do you go somewhere in between? And every your decisions are like affect the outcome and all these different things. So I was I was drawn in a lot more than I, I expected. Can you like make the goal like evil and like you totally could, yeah. Kill them all. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know about killing them all, but you could in a, inadvertently kill them all because, like, sometimes they get sick, and if you're just like ignore them and don't get the yeah. medicine or anything like that, then like indirectly, I guess you're killing them. There you go. Or uh, in, in different times, like sometimes, like you have you have to find essentially like what the government's telling you to do is find some some dirt on all these people and so you have to install security cameras and do some research and invade their privacy while they're gone and different things like that and try to find stuff and and while they're gone like like if you do find stuff they tell you either turn them in or evict them or arrest them and different stuff and the, and when you Can do you find ignore them, arrest you can ignore yeah um, so if you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm all for the people. I'm totally going to take care of my people no matter what. Um, then that affects your outcome and stuff as well. So that sounds kind of cool actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so the complete edition actually has like the prequel story in addition to it. So 
it's it's kind of cool. So yeah, I I got sucked in a lot more than I thought I would. Um, I kind of went in with like really low expectations. I'm like, nah, this is this is not gonna be my thing. And uh, it was like two three hours later, I was still playing and like really wanting to know what's going on. <laughs> nice. so. So, uh, yeah, I actually thought it'd be kind of cool to, uh, before we jump into any of the news as well, to maybe pose that question to you guys. What is that game that you kind of seem yourself like keep going back to time after time, even though you do have like maybe this whole list of games you want to get to? Uh, what do you keep going back to over and over and over again? You could probably play it um, no, like for hours and hours and hours and hours and never get tired of it. Greg, what's, what's that game for you? Probably like Super Mario Brothers three. I mean, I really absolutely love that game. That's like one of my favorite NES games, and pretty much my favorite Mario game. Nice, it's a good one. Barry, how about you? I think for one game only. Uh, it's kind of cheating because it's a board game, but the particular version I always go back to is the Xbox Live Arcade version of Catan. Uh, between that and Trials HD, I play those consistently back and forth i love those <laughs> games uh but definitely Catan. i could i could play that anytime nice that's that's a good game i finally learned how to play Catan just a couple years ago i was like i don't know why why it took me so long to uh to finally play it but it's fun that's how i learned it i never heard of it before i played the xbox live arcade i'm like wow this is a lot of fun and i just got addicted to it <laughs> nice nice uh, so anything that's uh, come out recently that uh, maybe it, it is on that list uh, that you haven't gotten to yet, maybe because you've been playing Gatan or you've played Super Mario Brothers 3? Um, any of those, those on there, Greg? Um, I do need to still finish up Smash Brothers, but I've <laughs> never really heard of Gatan, so maybe I'll have to check that out. I don't know if it's oh wow, yeah. on a Nintendo platform or Actually, something. Actually, uh, they're doing that board game digital thing. I'm sure Gatan is going to come to it. Yeah, I think... I, I, I remember really seeing helpful. something about that. I don't know if it's going to be the actual board game or it's like a variation of it, but I, 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 I thought I remember seeing that on the list. Yeah, I so. think it's coming to the Switch. Yeah, but I do want to finish. I still want to play more Octopath Traveler. I still need to finish up Smash Brothers. I still need to play uh, Mario and Rabbids, which I haven't even loaded up yet, but I purchased it. I still need <laughs> to play Mega Man 11. I just real life has just been super busy and I my list just keeps getting longer and longer <laughs> yeah I hear you I I also I eventually when I finished Bash Brothers it's it's not been a huge priority for mine I mean I'll eventually get to it but uh but it's one of those games that that I, I enjoy just booty, booting up and and playing you know just regular matches instead of uh always going after the story yeah um, I mean, I Barry, did, what's oh go ahead I did all the registration and I didn't even play as uh Piranha Plant yet so oh like, really yeah, I I have done that. It he, it's pretty fun. You should definitely try. Yeah, I've seen some memes of like four people playing like Piranha Plant at the same time and stuff. So, <laughs> Barry, uh, what's what else has uh, been on your list that you haven't got to over the last couple weeks? Uh, the main one is uh, Captain Toad DLC dropped, and uh, I'm debating trying to actually play that one handheld because it, it seems better fit for the handheld with the touchscreen. Uh, so I might try to work that in while I'm, I'm doing stuff for the company in 14. Uh, but yeah, that's probably the only one that really came out. And I do want to get back to Battle Princess Madeline. I was a Kickstarter of that, and that's a lot of fun, but I just <laughs> have to get back on the Switch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and for some of you that have not played Splatoon uh, 2, I, I hear Nintendo is actually doing another free weekend. Uh, it's coming up soon. you guys remember the dates on that? I, I should have wrote that down. I forgot. I didn't see anything about it. But, uh, yeah, it's coming up, I think, a couple weeks, I think, um, if I'm right. It might even actually be this weekend. Um, uh, but, 319 uh, to 325. Yeah, so starting tomorrow. Um, and... Uh, well, yeah, a whole week this time. So if, you know, for those of you that have not tried it yet, um, this could be an awesome opportunity. And I think you get like 20% off the game if you buy it during that time too. So uh, yeah. a great time to check out Splatoon 2. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's jump into a little bit of the news discussion. Um, the breaking news as of, I think it was this morning that I, I woke up and saw this uh, press release is that we're actually getting an indie showcase uh, this Wednesday. So March 20th 
and it's going to be that uh, that morning, I think, at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So at noon Eastern time, we're going to get a Nindy showcase, approximately 30 minutes long, focused on the Nintendo uh, independent games. Uh, they affectionately call Nindies. And uh, that's pretty much all we need, uh, all we know right now. Uh, do you guys, you guys have any speculation, any any ideas of what they're going to be showing off? Barry, you got any ideas? I have no idea what they're actually going to be showing off, but I'm glad to see. It seems Europe and Nintendo are taking turns doing these, um, and that's really cool. And I know a lot of people don't get super hyped about these. You know, they want the AAA, they want the new. Mario, but there have been some great indie darlings that have come out in recent years, and a lot of these uh, are getting physical, which I'm super excited about. In fact, this past week, we got Hollow Knight, we got Messenger, we've got uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, all announced physical, uh, and then Bloodstained's already out for pre-order, uh, so is Hollow Knight. Um, it's like, wow, all these are like the top, top one. Celeste is already getting physical. Like, this is what I wanted. These, these games deserve to be preserved. Um, so I'm going to be watching it and I'm going to be looking at which ones, you know, look interesting to me and, and hope, hoping that there's an announcement like, hey, you just saw this in the Nindies Direct. We've got a physical coming for you because that, that's what needs. We need it. More physical. That's cool. Uh, Greg, what do you think? Uh, what do you think we're going to see? I'm hoping we'll see some Axiom Verge on Wii U. <laughs> yes, I'm totally getting that. <laughs> I know you were referencing that 3DS isn't dead, but neither is the Wii U. We still got a, a new physical game coming to the Wii U. So. <laughs> well, that got delayed due to legal rights. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, just, whole yeah, I know. Of- I, I was just trying to make a joke. About it. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I saw the legal battle they were going through with all that, and it's very great that it's coming out. Because it's an excellent game. I did play on Wii U actually. So, nice. but, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, uh, these things are always just like yeah, I'm usually pretty excited. There's always at least a handful of them that I'm like, oh, man, that looks a lot of fun. I can't wait to play it. And I always try to mark those down on like the calendar to know when they're supposed to come out. So maybe we'll finally get to hear from uh, a TUI for Treasure uh, Treasure Knots or whatever that game was that like, was originally supposed to be on 3DS, but now it's on Switch. Mm, that's a good point, yeah. Yeah, I, I I'm always excited about these. Unfortunately, ah, just the the timing this week uh, has landed in a time where I've already got some meetings going on. I'll be busy during that time, but I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing afterwards. And it's interesting. Yeah, I, I what you brought up there, uh, Barry. Is it seems like um, Nintendo Europe and, and America seem to do are are kind of flip flopping each time, um, which I guess is cool. Um, that's interesting approach to everything. But it's uh, yeah, I thought it was interesting the last time. When, when Europe had one and America didn't, but then they just kind of said, hey, we announced some stuff over in the Nintendo Europe, just go watch it. It's like, okay, cool. Um, so I guess uh, this time Nintendo of America is doing it, um, which uh, it'd be exciting to see see what they announce. I really have no no clue, but it's been it's been cool to see what has come through over the years over for for Nintendo independent games. I mean, there's, they've been really pushing um, these indie games for the last uh, several years. I think they really have, First started was it on was it on Wii or Wii U when they really pushed strong on the indie side of things? They started with the Wii. I mean, there was a lot of great um, exclusive titles, but it was the Wii U when they started with the Nindies title, right? And I think it's it's been really cool to see a lot of great games come come our way. I mean, some of them that were out on PC first or other consoles first, and they brought them over just to get them, give them more life. Um, but then there's others that have been exclusives. So that's that's are always cool to see an exclusive or a timed exclusive of an indie game that comes out on Switch. And I, I love that um, it seems like it's easier and easier for these independent developers to to bring their games to Switch, which uh, which is which is great. I think more and more people get to play their games. Um, do you guys know anything about that? As as I know, at times like it's been hard in the in the past to to bring games to Nintendo consoles. Um, it is, still is. Is it still pretty difficult? And even though they're trying to make it easier, is it still difficult? Yeah. You saying? There's a there's a developer that actually ironically lives in my town, and I met him two years ago at Play NYC. Uh, he's developing a game called Antipole DX, which is mm-hmm. a really cool Mega Man X style game. Uh, I wrote about it in the Play NYC review. Uh, and in fact, he had it, it's coming to the Wii U and to the 3DS. And I actually got to play it on the 3DS. He had it on the 3DS there. Uh, and it was really cool. And then when I saw him last year 
at Play NYC. I was like, oh, you, you know, Anthem hasn't come out. It's cool. And he's like, yeah, well, I was coming to PS4 and Xbox One, but it's no longer coming to the 3DS, the Wii U, and I, I can't get on the Switch. I said, why? This is this is like Mega Man X. Like, mm. like Nintendo fans love this kind of stuff. He's like, Nintendo said no. Nintendo just said no. So Microsoft and Sony said yes. Um, mm. And it's like, why? So apparently it's not as easy as they make it seem. And a lot of independent developers who previously even had clearance now don't get the clearance. And I don't know the whole story of it. I don't know how many others are turned away, but it's as far as I'm aware, it's it's not as cut and dry. If I have an independent game, I want it. Okay, yes, you're on it. Like there still has to be some hoops. Yeah. Huh, that's interesting. Greg, I know uh, what you do for your you know career and everything is within software development and testing and everything like that. Do you know anything about uh, what it's like to develop games for for Switch? Is if it is difficult or not? No, I, it's mine's more like computer application based. It's not so much games, but I, I know like they initially they were really trying to not really grant a lot of people like access to their games. Like initially, and the Switch is like the first year of its life, so I'm still kind of surprised that. Like a story like Barry's is still out there, so hmm. I guess they're still being kind of picky and choosy with that nature, and that's never good. They should just, if somebody wants to make them a game, they should let them put the game on the system. Yeah, I mean, they have their own quality control to make sure that the game doesn't like allow to like to access the hardware in incorrect ways and non legal ways and all that stuff. So. so. Yes, yeah. but some would argue that their quality control has gone downhill with the eShop. So many really crappy games are getting out there and burying the really good ones. It is weird. I mean, because like you have stories like what you're talking about. I mean, I'm assuming that game is great. I mean, you played it, um, and you wouldn't be talking about it. Well, it's not finished it yet, it but what, I, what yeah. I did play was really, really good. It's and still in we, development. Right, and then we have other games. Or that's not making it, but we have other games that I played and we played, right? That that are really horrible. I'm like, why? Why is that? Those getting through with this one's not like doesn't even make sense. Well, yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's like it's. I don't know if he's like a one man team or something, but yeah, he is. He's a one man team doing it, I believe, or maybe like two people. But you know, there are other one man games. A Dust, for example, an Ecclesian Tale, is a one man thing. Um, I believe Undertale is a one man thing. Um, so I don't think that has anything to do with it. Yeah. So it'd be interesting what we see on Wednesday for sure. Yeah. And uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, if he does see some good success on Xbox and PlayStation, maybe Nintendo will be like, hey, how about bringing that game over to Switch? And oh no, that won't happen. He's already told me like like mm -hmm. he he feels burned, he, you know, and I don't blame him. You give him prop, you know, you say yes, and then you take away that clearance. I'd be burned too. Yeah. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah, I hope they. Uh, I hope they continue to open it up more and more, though, because I mean that's like, and because in the end, like the people that miss out are are the gamers. Like we we miss out on some great games if if they close the door to to some of these great opportunities, um, whatever the reasons are, um, and we end up sometimes. I mean, there's a lot of great games out there that we get to play. But uh, but sometimes you get stuck with horrible ones, and uh, I know one of the the ones that uh, Joseph actually is uh, just a little tease here. Uh, be staying tuned to our uh, to NinjaNoFuse.com because he's got a he's got a good one. Um, by good I mean that this review should be good. Um, but uh, he's in the process of reviewing and like games Somehow like that. I know you did that on purpose. <laughs> I think we all have to have like our little uh, you know uh, what's that called? Uh, just kind of uh, how it lens. Yeah, there you go. Palette cleanse of uh, of games early on in our uh, our reviewing career. Uh, to we only have to have a good a good horrible game to uh, to review. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, it'd be interesting to see what we see what we find on Wednesday. Uh, so tune, stay tuned to NintendoFuse.com because we're gonna have. Um, both uh, kind of reactions as, as it comes through and everything on our social media, but also a full recap of everything. So if you're like me and can't uh, actually watch it live, you can ch check it out later and we'll have all the details and uh, for sure be able to talk about that on our next podcast. Um, all right, let's let's move on because there was a big story that, uh, that broke. At least I think it could be big. Um, you guys tell me what you think. Uh, right after our podcast uh, two weeks ago, we've been talking about this a lot, right? 
we've been talking about how Nintendo may or may not be stepping in to the virtual reality game. We've been uh, kind of toying around with different things. People have found stuff hidden in the in the software and all the as, as they're hacking the system and everything. And we've we've heard rumors and and everybody's saying like it's not true it's true it's not true all this different stuff and lo and behold without nintendo direct no no really big hoopla around it nintendo comes out on uh, on march 6th and says that they're actually going to be stepping into the vr scene and with nothing other than nintendo labo uh so you're going to have uh, an opportunity really really soon um actually it's going to be uh i totally lost the date april 12th uh, so not too long from now, about just uh, about a month late uh, after this podcast, uh, we are going to be able to get our hands on a Nintendo Labo ToyCon 04 uh, kit, which is the the VR kit. So you can get a, a couple different options. You can buy the the entire kit, which has everything, or you can have the starter set, which comes with the blaster, and then you can buy the expansion sets. There's two expansion sets that come along the side of it. Um, but uh, essentially, all the different things that things that are available are the the VR goggles, which is basically like. Google Cardboard, um, and you slide your your switch in it, which is kind of what we speculated that it might be eventually, uh, and the blaster. Um, so you, have, of course, have to fold all these things together, and you have a kind of a blaster gun. Um, there's also the Toy-Con camera, where you put the um, Joy-Con in the the front of it and uses the 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 IR camera, and so you can uh, kind of visualize what's going on and you can actually take pictures with the other Joy-Con that's at the front, um, kind of like a, a shutter button. Uh, there's the Toy-Con Elephant, which uh, just looks interesting. Um, kind of has you, well, just imagine holding your trunk, I guess. Um, I don't really know what that one's all about. The Toy-Con Bird, which should be some sort of uh, flying thing, and uh, the Toy-Con Wind or Wind Pedal? Wind Pedal? I'm not sure. Is that wind or wind? I think it's wind. You think it's wind? Okay, good, because I really have no idea what it's going to do. Um, but you can get the wind pedal or the wine pedal, if you want to call it that. I don't know. Um, so what we don't know, we don't know anything else. <laughs> we have an, a decent idea of like how much and you know what what's going to be involved in each of these these uh, the games that come along with it and what you're going to be able to build and things like that. We know that the the full set is going to retail for uh, seven nine seventy nine ninety nine. And the small set is uh, the starter set is going to be thirty nine ninety nine, and you can buy the expansions each for nineteen ninety nine each in the U S. Um, and uh, that's about all. That's about all that we know right now. Um, we don't know if they're if they're going to expand that out to other games, like they have the uh, the one of the toy cons with the the wheel, like they built it into uh, Mario Kart. We don't know if they're going to do that with other games. We don't know if they're going to release other virtual reality games. They're going to work with with uh, toy con VR at least as of now. Um, so that's what we know. That's what we don't know. There's a lot more that we don't know, but I won't get into that. I'll leave that to you guys. Barry, what do you think of this? Is this this where this this is going to be how virtual uh, virtual boy comes, right? This, this is going to be through Labo? <laughs> this is certainly not <laughs> Virtual Boy 2. Um, this came out of nowhere. And the interesting thing is that there was not even a video that would accompany it. It was just a picture and a website, and that was it. Like the 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 garage one with the car and the the plane and all that. That got a really cool video, and obviously the initial launch had a video. Uh, what's also interesting is the VR stuff was actually shown in the original. Like you saw the camera in that original video, uh, and you saw like the pedal, you saw the, the bird thing or whatever I think, and uh, no one had any idea about them. And from what I gather, it's going to be. Again, smaller applications, they're going to use the Toy-Con Garage. Uh, I think if they were smart and they really, really wanted to push Labo units, they would do exactly what they're doing with their mobile strategy, which is use Nintendo IP. <clears throat> and I think if they said, hey, you like this camera? Well, we've got a brand new Pokemon Snap in VR. That would sell huge, huge. And I think, you know, if they used other VR things, they, maybe the elephant is you're riding on Ellie in Donkey Kong Country or something like that, and you're taking out Kremblings. I mean, I don't know. I don't really know what the heck that one's about. But just if they use Nintendo IP, I think that would sell it a lot more than just generic 
um, you know, we style, I guess you could put it, like we sports resort style, uh, graphics and all that, but we don't know. They haven't shown us any gameplay, and that worries me. The ToyCon Garage, uh, or you know, the, the Labo Kit, the ToyCon 3 with the vehicle, they showed us that. They Like, wow, that, that sold it for me, like seeing the gameplay. But the fact that they haven't shown us anything and it's less than a month to launch worries me. And I know VR is different when you see a video versus experiencing it. But you still saw a gameplay of PSVR games before they launched PSVR. We've seen nothing. We have no idea. P- they expect people to drop 80 hours blind on a supposed Google Cardboard VR and without any any idea of what they're actually even going to be playing. And I don't know how they're doing that. I don't know why they're doing that. They have to release something to show the gameplay because how could you sell a game with no gameplay? <laughs> That's true. And you can, like, they, I think they do mention that you can play it without actually being in VR because they do recommend that it's, you know, for younger audiences that they don't use that and everything. So, um, so you can play it without it. So it, it seems like they're okay with that. Just show some gameplay. It, let us see something instead of like very brief descriptions of maybe how you could use these things. And that's, that's basically all we have. Uh, what do you think about this, Greg? It's definitely a very smart move that they're doing this to kind of capitalize on the VR thing. I mean, I know it's kind of a lot of other companies have already had theirs in place for a while now, and everyone's been asking Nintendo where their part is at. So, I mean, it's going to be nice. I really think it's probably going to do really well because a lot of people seem to really like the VR stuff. From what I've seen, like I know my experience is where it's – I get kind of dizzy where I play it, so I don't think that's going to be the right thing for me. But I definitely know that a lot of people would be interested in it, and it just expands the Switch's audience overall. So it's definitely a very smart move, in my opinion. And as Barry said, hopefully that there will be a gameplay trailer. I mean, they could just sneakily drop one on YouTube in the coming weeks, but I guess you'll, we'll never know for sure until <laughs> we get closer to the launch date. So Yeah, you know. I hope we see something. And, and a lot of times they do, like they'll, they'll just like, you know, stealthily launch, launch something, you know, like the day before it, it comes out and be like, oh, hey, uh, look, there's a video they posted. Um, like even like this announcement came out of nowhere. Yeah. To me, this announcement tells me that I have no faith in this thing. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe. It, it almost sounds like Labo has not done what they wanted. This stuff was already in concept and development at the beginning because we again we saw them in the initial launch video and they're saving face when they say oh labo is still doing well this is already they already spent the time and money to develop this let's just get it out there um let's make it in packs to make it more affordable but let's get it out there and they're doing it the cheapest way possible here's an image here's the website it's coming out and that's it no fanfare no release no video nothing just like that yeah you know, the thing that, that hits me is um, is that Labo is designed for kids, basically. It's it's a younger audience thing. And I don't know. I mean, I'm not an expert. I'm not a biological expert by any means. But it, it seems weird to me that we've we've marketed this this VR thing that involves like putting these these I'm assuming they're going to be plastic, like the Google Cardboard lenses in front of your eyes in order to see your your Nintendo Switch screen in a way. I'm like, that's got to mess with your eyes. So even though, even if you are like past a certain age, so we market it to kids. And like we've talked about this before, like if when we were kind of speculating if um, VR is actually kind of come to the Switch in this form, they is the is the refresh rate fast enough? Is it actually going to like not cause people to vomit like in the, in the first five minutes of playing it? And you want know to be like, here's what's going to happen. You're going to have kids that have poor eyesight and be puking everywhere they go. Like that sounds awful to me. Like, <laughs> what do you guys, like? I don't know. <laughs> Can it talk me off this ledge here? Like that's that's what I see is a bunch of bunch of kids who can't see and puking everywhere. Like, Greg, like, am I right or I don't know what you think? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean that's. Definitely a concern that, I mean, I know a lot of people thought like the 3DS um, with like the 3D effect could cause like blindness and stuff and hurt your eye, damaging your eyesight and all that kind of stuff too. So they obviously are, did some research to know like kids under seven really shouldn't be playing with this. So, yeah, yeah. Barry, 
I mean, I know we, we all struggle with this. Like, do you think kids are going to be immune to this? I do not think kids will be immune to this because, uh, I mean, adults aren't immune to this. I just have this image of, like, them <laughs> introducing this to schools and all the kids just vomiting in the, in the trash pails and all this stuff. Like, like Maybe that's the deep. thing. Like, when I was in school, it was the cool kid that if you if you puked in class, like, that was the kid that got talked about all day long. So they're just, like, trying to up kids' reputa reputations now. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I really... I really can't see them being a ToyCon 5 other than, like, you know, how to hire a lawyer to, so, so, to sue us because our, your kid is now sick or something like that. Like, I just can't see where they can go from here. Like, it seems like there's been a natural progression. Even VR is a natural progression. But I don't see where they can go after this point. And I really... Just, just the like Nintendo has been so smart with their marketing lately. Like the Switch marketing has been on point. Everything they've done, the commercials, the way they pushed stuff, even the previous Labo stuff has been on point. The first video was this is intended for younger audiences. It was its own separate thing. The ToyCon garage or the ToyCon vehicle kit came out of nowhere, but again, it was this really cool video. It showed a kid playing it, specifically a kid because it was designed for that with his parent helping him. This is just, yeah, we have this. We need something. What do we have in April? Oh, nothing. Okay, here you go. Yeah. So, so here's the question then. I mean, we've speculated a lot about it. We've talked about the rumors in past podcasts. Now that it's actually a thing, do we want it? <laughs> like, is this is something you actually do want on the Switch to be able to uh, throw your your console in this? cardboard thing and actually play VR on your switch with the switch as it, as it currently stands, like in its current hardware form is, is this what we want? Do you, do you want this Greg? Is this, is this exciting to you or, or what? I don't think it's really targeted for me because as I stated, I mean, it might probably likely make me sick. So, I mean, that's why I think they're still kind of hitting the market where it's like other VRs are out there and now Nintendo has VR on their platform and, some form obviously but i guess we'll have to more wait and see how well it will sell so hmm. all right all right barry are, are you excited at all about it i'm excited about the prospect but i think it's one of those things where you in your head things always appear cooler than they really are and i think that's a problem just in general with hype and not that i'm necessarily hyped for this but since they haven't shown any gameplay, I can only imagine what they're doing with those six different uh, things, like the blaster. Oh, cool! Are we, you know, are we fighting something? Are we fighting aliens? Are we? You know, is it called back to like Face Raiders on the 3DS? Is it going to be a new Metroid game, or or are we going to get another Geist game or something like that? Like, like where are they going to go with this? But I know that whatever I'm thinking in my head, however I'm picturing. It's not going to be that. It's going to be going to be remotely like that, and I already don't have hype, so it's going to be you know the bar is already set low, um, and I'm also scared about putting your switch in. You look quickly, you're like, oh my god, something's like in VR. You have to sometimes move really quick. What's that? Boom! Your switch goes flying through the cardboard, smashes against the wall, and you're like dumbfounded, like what happened? Um, like these are things you do not want. So that's that terrifies me. Um, Especially because all the you know data is on there, and there are some games like Smash Brothers you can't save on the cloud. And when you've gone through the entire Smash campaign and got all the spirits, you don't want to lose that. Um, so it goes flying into a pile of puke. And pile of puke. The puke <laughs> goes with it. <laughs> yeah. Projectile this vomit. Is, this is getting nasty. I don't yeah. know if they've really thought you, this you, through. You, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that I will be picking up for collector's purposes. And I'm intrigued enough that I might put it together to try, but I'm also just as intrigued to wait for someone else to do it and watch their reactions. Yeah, yeah. This does seem like one of the easier Labo builds, though. That's that's the good thing. Like I, it's not like one of those difficult ones. I'm pretty sure it's it's just as simple as as a Google Cardboard thing. Um, so what I would like to do is I, I'd like to speculate a little more. Like where where could this go? If, if this is a hit, let's say it actually does take off. Let's say people aren't puking all over the place and ruining their eyesight and losing their switch and having to buy three more by the time the week's over. Let's, uh, let's say it actually does go well. 
where does Nintendo go from here in the terms of VR? Is the should VR be a thing for Switch? Should it be a separate thing? Uh, should they actually maybe try to like incorporate that into the the Switch Pro when that comes along, like the like the PlayStation VR, and it's a separate unit that attaches to there? Where should they go with VR if they should be playing in the VR game at all? Greg, what do you think? I almost think that they're just. Um... I guess maybe have a non-cardboard edition of it that would just be a peripheral that you could sell on the side, and then it would have its own selection of games that would require it. I mean, Nintendo's done that in the past with like the Motion Plus and other accessories that they've introduced as well. Okay. Not a bad idea. Hopefully one you can kind of block the sides a little bit and yeah. uh, lock it into place. <laughs> the real Virtual Boy 2.0 with like the thing <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one that actually straps to your face because the the cardboard actually you just yeah. hold it up the whole time. Yeah. So yeah. that's also got to get boring. And and again, kids like their arms are not that strong. They're not gonna be able to hold it up for very very long. And actually, they <laughs> I saw that they're like they they're promoting multiplayer in this. That you you do it and you pass it around. Like that's so weird. You Anyhow. know what gets me? They're yeah, actually promoting the fact that there is no strap as a plus. Yeah. They're like doing this without the strap. Like, no, did you learn nothing about like the Wii and the having the, the wrist straps? Like, this is just even worse. Just play with your Switch like this with no strap. Wee! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> leave it. Leave it to Nintendo to to make those things a, a, a added bonus. Oh, look, you don't have to strap this to your face. But you know, Nintendo. Why am I excited they about that? Encourage you to take breaks in the middle of your while you're playing. I mean, <laughs> well, they did that with Virtual Boy. <laughs> well, no, it was also with Wii too. It was like playing Skyward Sword or something like 30 minutes in. Like, oh, right. you should take a break. And it's like, no, I want to finish this dungeon. <laughs> Uh, Barry, before we get to your thoughts about future VR, I want to uh, say hi to a couple guys in our, our uh, chat room. Jakester has been talking a lot about uh, that. He said it's it's been hard on his eyes. Even the the 3D uh, the 3DS is 3D uh, was hard on his eyes as well. Um, he actually talked about there's this video of a guy who stays on VR for a whole week. That that feels awful, especially if if it was the, the Nintendo Switch. I'm like I would be that it my whole house would be just smelling really bad. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, and uh, Matt Matt's joined us. Matt hasn't been back here for a while, so good to see you, Matt. Uh, great to uh, to have you back in the chat. So Barry, what do you think? Like where do they go from here? Where should they go from here? Ah. Uh. I think if this hypothetically takes off and does well, then their best option would be some kind of headset unit, like a proper headset unit that connects to, it would have to be a Switch Pro. It would have to have the power to run the refresh rate. It would have to have the power to uh, make it so people weren't sick or not, not as sick, or at least as quickly, you know, build up, help build up the tolerance. I can't see it with with uh, the regular switch, and so it would have to be its own standalone unit, and it would have to work with the pro, and it has to have specific games, um, and then it would be more expensive. But to do it proper, that's the way to do it. I mean, that if you're gonna do something right, you you do it. You do it right. You don't don't you don't half bake it. You really. Especially when you're dealing with eyesight, like the lawsuits, how are cheap they're going to make it if there's lawsuits? That's going to cost them way more than whatever this is. So I don't know. This is one of those times where I think Nintendo will have to, to copy Sony mm -hmm. uh, if, if they want to pursue. Um, that's a big if. Who knows? Maybe with the partnership with Microsoft, they'll use HoloLens instead. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So here's probably a bigger question. I, I know we have various experience with, with virtual reality. Um, Greg's not a huge fan of it. Um, Barry, I know you've experienced it. You, you got PlayStation VR. Um, I've kind of, I've dabbled in it with the, like the mobile phone stuff, um, but I haven't really dived into it with uh, anything like Oculus or, or anything like that either. Um, for the most part, I know all of us get sick at a, at a certain level. So, it, do we see, I guess, collectively or maybe you individually for a second, like, is is virtual reality a big thing that Nintendo should chase after? Is it is it that big of a thing, or should they are they just putting this out to say, oh yeah, we got our VR thing and we're moving on? Just like, is it is it the future of, of video games? What do you think, Barry? 
yes and no. Um, is it the future of technical Marvel for video games? I think so. But is it the true future of video games? I said no. And simply because when you're dealing with something that is making people physically ill and it's not just a little nausea like it will rock you when you get vr motion sick like you will be down for the count you alienate that user base so even if you were to say 60 percent of the people who who experience vr do not get sick and 40 percent do it's it's up to a company do you really want to spend the time and money and resources to develop a game that only 60% of the user base can experience and enjoy versus a game that's not for VR that 100% of the user base can enjoy? And that really boils down to what VR experiences we're getting now. And there are a lot of VR games coming out. Many of them aren't getting even physical in America, but Europe, they're, they're getting physical. But a lot of them are just short experiences. Like Skyrim is an ex, you know ex, uh, exception, but even like like Batman VR is a short thing. It's like a two hour thing, and a lot of them are short for that very reason. They're short little things. They want you to get in, they want you to experience, it, and they want you to get out. Um, I think that's more the future of VR at this point. Until we can figure out a way to cure that motion sickness, it's not worth it for a developer, even with the install base of a PSVR already established to make a 60 hour epic AAA title that 60% and or however many percentage are gonna be able to enjoy it and the other 40 or whatever percent are not versus a non VR version that everyone will be able to enjoy. And that's why a lot of these games are coming out with VR mode included where they have like a small little VR section to promote that. It's a cool little tech demo, but the main game is not in VR for that very reason. So it's a big hurdle. Um, Nintendo is all about accessibility. Um, this might be their way of testing the waters and seeing how it is. The problem is, is I don't think a lot of people are going to experience it, um, especially without seeing gameplay, because they're not going to know, well, let's drop $80. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, outside of the collectors or the really, really morbidly curious, it's not going to sell. Um, so, yeah. It, it really depends on how much they want to invest in it. And when you're talking about to a company that we have to beg for certain games, at least in this country, I don't think they're going to want to invest that money. So I don't see it really mm -hmm. going. And I think they're still sour with the virtual boy too, you know, the, mm -hmm. the whole virtual boy experience. Yeah. It's interesting. You, you mentioned the, like the short experiences and I think that's when I, the best experiences that I have had with VR has been in those short experiences, either with the short games or like the documentary videos and things like that. They can just take you to another world. It's really cool. But uh, it's, I always end up getting sick not too long after it. And so they're really going to have to overcome that. Um, but, uh, but it's interesting to me. I'm wondering if, if they're even going to some of those VR games, that are already on the switch that kind of seem weird. I think it's like the don't uh, don't talk and or stop talking and no one explodes or whatever game. Um, yeah. Like that's already on there. Will it get VR enhancement with Labo or what? I'm not sure. Like because that could make that game maybe better if it works well. Because um, I always thought it was it was weird to like not play it in VR. I'm like who wants this game not in VR? <laughs> I guess because it's kind of built for that. There's but also I'm gonna say yeah. there's also games that are not VR that when they use VR, they're actually significantly enhanced. And mm. the biggest one I could think of is Thumper. Thumper is a fun rhythm game. And if you like rhythm games, I do recommend it. But I played, you know, I've seen someone play the Switch version and I've seen someone play the regular PS4 version. And then I've played personally the VR, the PS4 VR version. And let me tell you, it is a whole new experience. And it's not really a sick, thing because you're not like constantly looking you're looking straight ahead but the depth of field the 3d the effect like it is uncanny how different of an experience even though the whole game is playable without vr it is significantly enhanced in vr and it's one of those that probably won't make you as sick as, as like a lot of the ones with you know head moving around and and constant motion it, it's just it's something like to really see what vr can do and i think that's where vr sells it's mm. something that you can't look at a video and get the true experience as opposed to experiencing it yourself. Mm.
Yeah. I do know that there's there's a few games, like even on the 3DS. I know n- none of us were like huge fans of the of the 3D on the 3DS. It was a great effect, but there were certain games that I had to play in 3D because they really did enhance it and it'd be so much better. Jakester's in the, the chat talking about how if they do bring, like fully bring on uh, VR to the Switch, he's hoping to see Tetris Effect on there. Um, I have not played Tetris Effect, but I know it's getting praised like crazy. So maybe it'd be a an add-on to Tetris uh, 99. I can add the, the effect uh thing on there somehow i'm bringing into vr i don't know um greg where where's the future of vr in games is it is it something nintendo should chase after or is is it going to be gone soon it, i mean i almost think it was to be gone soon i mean i was going to completely agree with barry and then i was also going to draw the comparison to the 3ds i mean the 3d effect was phenomenal in certain games especially like super mario with 3d land that was one of the ones that almost kind of required you to have it in a sense, because they made some sub areas that like you really needed to have the effect on to complete it. Mm. But I think in a sense that Nintendo even realized that that was more of an actual gimmick because you eventually see in the last few years, we've seen very little games that have even a 3D support built in with them. And I think that's because they're just trying to cater to the entire user base and not that lower percentage of people that really enjoy using the 3d depth slider so i kind of see that kind of comparison being valid for vr with various cases and so many people getting sick and having problems with it they'd rather not expand on that and waste the development resources put into that so yeah yeah let's say they actually do well let's say let's say you know what nintendo somehow knocks it out of the park uh, they they take all their the things that they learned from the Virtual Boy, and they uh, they take it fifty steps ahead, you know at least matches uh, on the same same level as maybe Oculus and and all these other great companies out there and gets VR well does VR well. Let's just say for the for the sake of the argument they actually do it well. What games of first party? For specifically from Nintendo, would you absolutely love? And you'd be like, I mean, uh, apart from your your collection, Barry, because you got it, you got to buy it anyhow. But like, you'd be <laughs> standing in line, having to get it day one, doing all you can to make sure you play this Nintendo game in virtual reality. So, what do you think, Barry? Um, <clears throat> aside from something like Pokemon Snap, which would be amazing. I I would like to say Zelda, but I know I could never deal with Skyrim VR. And I know many people who enjoy it, but I know I would be sick. And I would not want Zelda VR because I wouldn't be able to play it. And it would be the first Zelda game I couldn't play, and that would make me sad. So I would not want that. But maybe a Mario platform. Astrobot mm-hmm. is a great example of platforming done well in VR. And I think, you know, Mario has literally written the book on 3d platforming and this would be a way to make a true love letter in that sense and i'd like to see that i think that would be the one that'd be really cool for sure kind of put you in the game a little bit yeah yeah greg what do you think well, no it you would be the camera that's how okay. it works okay you are the camera looking around okay. and you play mario okay gotcha that, that could be cool too. I I think I would like both. I would, I would like the option of both. So they be be cool to kind of be in that, but also it can be cool to kind of zoom around with the camera and everything too. All right, I could see that. What do you think, Greg? Well, not only did Barry make two excellent suggestions with Mario and Zelda, but I think I might go one step farther, and I think something even like Mario Kart would be pretty mm-hmm. incredible. Maybe even F Zero or something along those lines, but that would probably be way too fast and. Well, there, there is, high speed, there is a wipeout, not, yeah, wipeout uh, collection on uh, a PS4 is VR, and a lot of people say that's a lot of fun. So F Zero, I, I don't think you're off the mark there. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean that's that's uh, they're bringing F Zero back, is in in Labo VR. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, I think any of those things can really work. I mean, Fire Emblem, I think, could really work really well the way they do those battle cut scenes with the camera. That would be really cool. I mean, you can really apply this to any game. Star Fox would be very incredible too. I think cause that's what we were trying to do with Star Fox Zero, but kind of failed on that. <laughs> yep, that's true. Have, have that cockpit view and... 
the thing awesome. is, is it's interesting because a lot of these titles have something similar already in VR. Um, you know, you mentioned Star Fox, there's Eve Valkyrie, there's Ace Combat 7. Um, so there are already flying games in VR. There's a, a Star Wars uh, X-Wing mission in Battlefront. Um, that's a lot of fun. And I can totally see Star Fox. And I think if you're interested in Nintendo IPs and VR, sadly, you're going to have to use your imagination and play the equivalents on PlayStation VR or Oculus and pretend that you're really Fox McCloud, even though you're not, you know? <laughs> right, right. Uh, Jakester's talking about Zelda. He'd like to see Zelda. Metroid Prime uh, could be a good one, of course. Um, he mentions Luigi's Mansion. And uh, that's one that I would love to see uh, in VR as well. That would be fun. I don't know if you guys have played the the arcade version of Luigi's Mansion. Uh, I think they have it at Dave & Buster's and some other arcades. Uh, it is great. Like I can't remember if that's one you actually wear 3D glasses. I think you do. Um, but it's it's like a, this 3D effect and everything, and you actually have the poltergust, and you're like shooting it, and it's it's really fun. So I can imagine, like, you know, dedicating a whole room to uh, to busting ghosts in Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, that could happen. Totally. I could just totally clear out this room and just be busting ghosts the whole time. It'd be awesome. <laughs> but uh, I think it could be interesting. I, and like you, like you guys have said, I, it'd be really cool to to have Nintendo IP um, with this if they really believe in it. But uh, most likely they're not. And most likely this is all we're going to see. And I don't know. I think it's going to fail. Um, I, I hate to say that, but I really don't think it's going to go that well. And and I don't I don't know if we're going to see actual virtual reality uh, on the Switch at all. Um, and and I'm I'm wondering with with you, Greg. I wonder how what the future of of virtual reality in the home really is. Like it's it's got to advance in certain ways where we have less and less less people that actually do like. <laughs> throw up in the whole thing and <laughs> more it's going to be more and more for the general audience um you gotta get prices down all those different things and i don't know i don't know if it's worth it um for me like i i've had opportunities to even try it out at different places and i and it's it's not as cool as it once was i guess as well and i've talked to other people and like you know when it first started coming out there was lines of people to try out the oculus and try out the the all these different other you know other ones that are out there and it's less and less exciting anymore and so it's like oh yeah it's just whatever and uh, i don't know if people are that excited about vr anymore so i don't know i i mean nintendo should just stay out and just like oh you know we did our vr thing we're good we we checked that box and now we can move on. I think it all depends on the experience. Uh, for example, like even when the N64 came out, people were going goo goo gaga for Mario 64. Like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Um, but you don't hear people going goo goo gaga for Chameleon Twist or for Tonic Trouble or for Jumping Flash or for any of these other 3D platformers of that era because there was a difference. It was quality, it was something new. And, you know, I've seen people go like, oh, I tried VR and I tried this little game and it was eh, whatever. I've seen people go like, I've been Ace Combat 7 and this is the greatest experience ever. Or Wipe Out, you know, Omega Collection. Oh, my God, this is phenomenal. Like, I, or, or, you know, Dirt Rally. Like, oh, I, I got a wheel, I got a whole setup and here I am at home and I'm, you know, driving around and, and it, it just feels incredible. And so I really think... The excitement's there, but it has to be with the right experience. With so many VR applications, I'll even say, on these stores, the Oculus, the Vive, the PSVR, um, a lot of them are just little PS or little VR experiences. They're not full-fledged AAA experiences. Mm -hmm. And the little things are more like sideshows. They're not the main attraction. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I guess... Uh... <laughs> Guess we'll see how things go on April twelfth when uh, when Labo VR comes out. Maybe uh, maybe after that we'll actually see some gameplay. Um, yeah, maybe their Nintendo tuned in like oh, after sure. Barry was right. We should have just used all of our IPs in this one game. I really hope the the first time we don't see gameplay is from some streamers online. Like that's what uh, it's gonna be. That's that's probably what it is gonna be. But uh, it'd be horrible. And here's the thing, like, actually, we were thinking earlier, we were saying earlier, uh, Greg, like, bringing, you know, F-Zero to, to VR, it's it's like almost like they they brought, when they brought uh, F-Zero to what, the Nintendo Land, it was like, oh, look, we did we did F-Zero, we, we put it on Labo, um, enjoy. Like, no, that's not what we want. They'll make it yeah. so that you have to have that with the wheel, 
but remember there's no strap so you have to steer while holding you know like oh where am i going oh upside down oh my god i'm gonna die like it's gonna be the most awkward and terrible thing possible and that's how you know nintendo did it <laughs> you can have um, people adding their own straps to the nintendo labo <laughs> it's so true it's but true. What I was about to say, watch it be actually like Nintendo Land 2, and then it's going to be like all these different IPs of Nintendo, like in all like s- small mini game like versions of them. Yeah, probably. I, I actually wouldn't put that past them because they, they like the idea of this multiplayer passing around and everything, and, and it's totally going to fall out and get busted. And you're like, it's like hot potato sort of thing. Like, oh, you're the one that broke my, my switch. You're you're the one that dropped it. You got to buy me a new one. And uh, good luck at getting my save data back from Here, Smash Brothers. Here's another uh, thing, too, with VR, is when you take it off, especially if you start getting nauseous, you get very sweaty. Uh, so it has to constantly be cleaned. And when you're passing it around multiplayer, if someone, God forbid, has like pink eye or something like that, and it has happened, people have gone to like these public events and have tried VR and have gotten like pink eye and other eye diseases because they don't clean the lenses properly. So if you're playing like a multiplayer game, all right, your turn, you know, you got to scrub it down. Okay, here you go. And, you know, people complained about Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival where everybody had to tap the Amiibo every time they had to roll. And so they had to pass the game pass around that's nothing compared to scrubbing it down with lysol and making sure it's clean and here you go and <laughs> and, and it's made out of cardboard and so it's made out of cardboard it so way. it melts <laughs> <laughs> it's just melt you sprayed it not that much you know <laughs> uh, this is going to be awesome on April 12th let me tell you <laughs> it's oh man well any any last thoughts about about uh, Labo VR, we got what I think two, uh, one more, one more podcast before then. Yeah, one more podcast before uh, before VR Labo comes out. Uh, any last thoughts before we move on? No, I, I'm done. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. I mean, it'd be nice if it does well, and then maybe they'll have different variety of it, but it just doesn't seem likely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I of course. I mean, with any new endeavor and experiment, I I want Nintendo to succeed. I want them yeah. to because I think they can build upon it over time and continue to make it better and better. Um, with their failures, they don't often take large steps forward. They often do that with their with their successes. Their failures, they kind of tend to throw to the back and forget about them and uh, pretend they never existed. And so I want this to succeed so they can continue to build upon it. I wanna see great VR. I wanna be able to experience the games that we've talked about in you know, of Nintendo uh, IP in VR, but I just don't know, especially with this, it, it seems like they're they're just checking it off, off their list. Like, yeah, we did that, happy, enjoy it. Let's what worries on. me is I feel like this is going to be an excuse. They're going to they're throwing this out there. If it fails, people will be like, "We want you want you to actually enter VR," and they'll be like, "Well, we tried that with Labo, therefore we're not doing it." And that's yeah. that's going to be their excuse, just like Virtual Boy. They've tried that. Oh, we were there first. We did Virtual Boy. It didn't work. Therefore, we're not doing it again. And yeah. and that's not what we want. That's that's not even really trying. I mean, it's creativity. Creativity A plus. I'm not going to say no to that, but you're still half assing it. Right. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's well, I mean equivalent to all the the times we've like ripped EA for their horrible like sports games they they throw on the Nintendo system. They're like, "Oh, look, we put FIFA on there. It was the well, it was 3 years old FIFA and you could just update it with new rosters and you released it physically in another country." Uh yeah, I guess you throw it on there, but don't use that as an excuse when it doesn't sell well. Like, and so I'm, I'm afraid the same thing. Like, oh, well, yeah. no, VR, Labo VR didn't sell very well. I guess people don't want it on, in there, and we're not going to try it anymore. But we tried it. Yeah, it's Mass Effect 3 on the Wii U. Look, we gave it to you, but we, we also released the trilogy on the other platforms for the cheaper price. Um, so, yeah, um, we, we tried. I don't know why it didn't sell, but we tried. Right. Yeah. Jake's just saying that uh, he hopes they they do it fine in the beginning so that they can make it better as people buy it more. And uh, yeah, I'd agree. I I hope they do well. Um, I don't have high expectations for this. It sounds like all of us are in agreement with that. Um, But but we do hope it goes well. Um, It's just just not looking good so far. (laughs) 
Uh, well, let's uh, let's turn our attention a little bit to the future, uh, a little bit more to the future, maybe the things we actually know um, before we wrap up today, uh, today's podcast. So uh, what what are some games the rest of this year that are, are coming out that uh, and normally we look at the next two weeks before the next podcast, but I'd like to cast our sights a little further uh, the rest of 2019. Um, what are some of those games that you're really, really looking forward to to playing this year. The games we definitely know are coming out. And uh, you feel free to talk about, you know, those games that are, are you know, the big AAA titles, but maybe maybe a couple that uh, are a little more unknown, maybe the indie games, maybe some of the indies that we know about already that you're really excited about playing uh, over the rest of this year. Um, Greg, you got any that come to mind? Yeah, there's certainly a number of them um even one that fits within the time frame called uh yoshi's crafted world that one looks mm -hmm. incredible and definitely can't wait to play that one but now we can cast out and a little bit farther and we can say oh super mario maker 2 everyone knows that's mm -hmm. probably likely to be my game of the year but we'll have to wait and see how that goes down um fire emblem three houses that's gonna be another I can't wait to play that one too. That's gonna be super incredible to have Fire Emblem on the Switch. Um, then there was what was the other big one that um, I think Luigi's Mansion Three is gonna be even on Switch mm -hmm. this year too. That's gonna be very great to have. Um, For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would have originally said Metroid Prime Four, but that's definitely not coming this year after they uh, kind of hit the reset button. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, Barry, what's what are you looking forward to playing the rest of this year? Uh, number one, Link's Awakening, uh, for sure. Uh, <laughs> number two, uh, that game, I forget, Onyaka or something like that they showed in the last Direct, the one oh. from Tokyo uh, RPG Factory. Um, that, you know, I've seen so many people just write that off. That one looks really, like, it's gripped me. So that one, for sure. Um, Luigi's Mansion 3, of course. Um, that one, that one, I'm... I can't wait. I love the first two. Uh, Mary Maker 2, of course. I'm going to be messing around with that. Not as much as Greg. And I'm sure <laughs> I'll start and then eventually I'll move on to something else. Within and a then, week. <laughs> uh, maybe. Who knows? And then I'll get, get poked. You need to play my levels. Why haven't you logged on and play my You need to play them. Um, and uh, in terms of Switch, oh, Demon X Machina and Astral Chain. Those two I'm really looking forward mm -hmm. to. I really like the prototype missions of Demon X Machina. And uh, Astro Chain just looks amazing. I, I love uh, Platinum games. Um, mm -hmm. For the Switch, that's mainly it. But of course, all that depends on Shadowbringers coming out at the end of July. Um, or end of June, I mean. That's, that's, that very well could kill every game that comes out and just absorb me in. Because that's what MMOs do. Nice. Nice. Uh, Jakester says uh, the three games that he's really looking forward to is Link's Awakening, uh, which is going to be great. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 3 and Animal Crossing. Um, so we, we really don't know much about that at all. And uh, I think a lot of people were even in the comments, I saw people replying to Nintendo earlier today when they announced the Nindies Direct. They're like, what about Animal Crossing? I'm like. Seriously, guys, like they're not going to show Animal Crossing in the Indies Direct, but I get you. I get you still want information. It's it's not going to happen in the Indies Direct, but uh, or Indies Showcase. But yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. He's also looking to uh, <laughs> for the Digimon Survive uh, as well. So um, yeah, I agree with all all what you guys said. Uh, Luigi's Mansion Three is going to be great. Uh, Link's Awakening, um, Super Mario Maker Two. I'm looking forward to playing Greg's levels, and um, I'm looking forward to making like five or six myself, and then just playing everybody else's levels because that's what I did with the first one. Um, but it's it's fun to play around with for sure. Um, I, I've said this before as well, but uh, really looking forward to Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three. Um, I love the fact that it's going to be on online. Um, so I hope I can play with uh, with you guys and maybe some other pe uh, my friends as well. Um, I am also looking forward to Demon X Machina. Um, Astral Train does look so interesting. So uh, that's that's definitely on the list as well. Um, I think uh, one of the the 
the games that uh, does come to my mind um, or do come in my mind, like the collection of those those board games, um, they're going to be kind of released. We mentioned Catan earlier. Um, just that that idea of them bringing the a lot of those board games to Switch is is really exciting for me. Um, I think that's that's one of those cool things that you can. I, I don't know about you guys, but uh, when I was little, like going on vacations with my parents, we take the road trips and we have all have like the the travel size games. And that's what I kind of imagine with with these kind of games. Like we had the like the little Connect Four travel size, and it was like these little tiny little pieces, and you had to put it all together, and you lost it under the seat, and and all of a sudden did, it was. Did it was you cool. have those little magnetic ones that like folded in half, like the chest, and you opened it up, and you had like the little pieces inside? And totally had, did. Oh my yes. god, <laughs> those are great. Uh, and I even had a oh, what did I? I? I still have it. Um, I have a travel size. Uh, uh, not categories, um, Scrabble um, as well. That's like magnetic and everything too. So you don't lose all the, the letters. Um, but that's what I imagine with with these these board games coming to to Switch. It's kind of a, a cool experience. So there's a couple of board games that I play on my iPad and I love taking it with me. Um, kind of that same idea. And I love that, that some of these great, like really great board games are are being kind of ported over and you get a digital version on the switch and i think uh it'd be, it'd be fun to see how they go um see how they do on, on the system so um but uh yeah there's a lot of great games as well we have uh the assassin's creed collection we have rumors of uh what, what was the other collection that that was rumored uh, castlevania was, yeah castlevania oh man i'm so excited about that i don't even know what games are on it but i'm excited <laughs> yeah all we know is <laughs> oh that's another one bloodstained i forgot about bloodstain i'm excited for too so it could be really good. I'm I'm still on the fence. I maybe end up trying out those of the Final Fantasy games that that can, are coming over as well. Some of them have already come over. Um, so yeah, it's it's gonna be it's been a pretty pretty great year for for Switch for sure. So uh, anything else uh, that's kind of on your mind before we wrap up today, guys? Any last minute thoughts about uh, Nintendo gaming? <sighs> Do you think we're going to get a direct between, besides the Nintendo and Indies mm -hmm. thing, between now and E3, before E3? Obviously, we're getting one E3, but before E3. Right. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to think, like, maybe in April. I, I, I couldn't see one in May. If it, if it does happen, it's got to happen in April, and probably early to mid-April. Um, I gonna... even think late April is, is way too late. Yeah, it would have to be a specific game direct I could see in in May, but not a yeah. real direct. And right. what about Which the could mobile for Smash? Yeah, do you think we'll get a mobile direct seeing Doctor Mario World, Mario Kart Tour, mm -hmm. whatever else they're doing? Plus, maybe future plans for Fire Emblem Heroes and Dragalia Lost, and even maybe new Super Mario Run content. Who knows? No, I don't think they would do the mobile things. I think they just separate them out, or at least by IP, or at least. I'm just saying, like a mobile yeah. direct. I mean, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp had a direct. Regalia Lost had a direct. Fire Emblem Heroes had a direct. Um, so it's not unusual. I'm not saying it isn't unusual, but I think having all those games together would be very unusual. <laughs> it could be, but I guess you never know. I mean, if if they really like what they've been seeing, they want to put a little more oomph, I guess, toward uh, really supporting that. I, I could maybe see it happening. Um, and it, and it could be one of those things that does does happen, especially with a couple of these games. Like if they have some more information on the Mario Kart um, game, they have some more information about these other ones. They they might they might put it together all in one, or we could definitely see it maybe maybe tagged onto another direct. Um, but that, that's an interesting thought for sure. So. I did have a thought that came to mind. That I had more of a question for Barry. Um, did you see the controversy with the uh, Star Tropics on Switch? Yes, I did. Yeah, I thought that's pretty pretty funny. That I did Nintendo. not see that. What what? Fill me in like the original game on NES has came with like a map or something like that, and then special parchment. And then no, you it like, came with a letter. Okay, like a, a letter, letter, letter or something. Letter. And then you can like soak it in water or something and reveal a special code right. to allow you to advance in one of the stages. And right. so. I think since there's no way to have this actual code in place, like the Switch version, I guess you can kind of get locked in place if you don't think to Google the code type thing. Oh, so on when they come out with well, for was it Wii U or Wii? Wii U had that it, version. It was in a yeah, digital. Yeah, Wii. Yeah, Wii U yeah, right? had the digital manual. 
digital but manual. there's no digital manuals for these nope yeah ah. no it had a digital manual and like it was like a little picture and it like it dipped in water yeah. and then it appeared and yeah this doesn't have it now granted at this point anyone can look it up but the yeah, fact that yeah. you have to use outside sources is pretty funny that they didn't think to include it, which is funny because it, when they did that in Star Tropics, it was very forward thinking, very, very forward thinking. And now it's almost backwards, like <laughs> not going back on it. Right. Well, it was clearly on their minds when they when they made the Wii U version, like the, to include that extra thing in there to make that happen. So it seems odd that they just decided to leave it out this time and... Yeah, people will figure it out. I guess you know we're we're in 2019. We have Google at our fingertips. I guess I guess they just trust us now. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, it's been fantastic to talk to you guys about games again tonight. Um, before we wrap up, we do want to remind you to go ahead and subscribe here on YouTube if you are watching live or watching after the fact. Make sure you do subscribe if you haven't yet, and uh, that way you get all our videos. And, and while you're at it, hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we post that video, every time we go live uh, for a podcast, a gameplay uh, video, anything like that that we post. Um, make sure you get that alert. And we also do want to let you know that uh, next podcast, the next podcast is going to be on April 1st. No joke. No, we're not joking here. It's actually going to be on April 1st. And uh, we cannot uh, confirm nor deny that we will have any sort of uh, April Fool's jokes during the podcast. We're just going to say um, tune in, find out. Uh, but uh, it definitely is on April 1st. That's not a joke. And um, if you are uh, listening after the fact and you found us uh, by the many different ways out there, you you uh, found the Nintendo Fuse podcast be sure to subscribe in your favorite podcast app. That way you get this podcast every time we release it. We we have a podcast pretty much every other Monday night. Um, we urge you guys to, to tune in live. We love having you guys live. We love uh, hearing your thoughts in the, in the chat room the whole time through and all that stuff. Um, but if you can't tune in live, we'd love to, to have you subscribe. That way you can get it every time we release it. And um, that's that's pretty much it for this time. Uh, thanks again, guys, for for joining me. Greg, uh, what, are you, what are you gonna be doing? Uh, what's your first game you're gonna be playing right after we get done? Paw Patrol, no. <laughs> Paw Patrol, all right. <laughs> no, probably Fire Emblem Heroes. <laughs> Fire Emblem Heroes, all right. Uh, Barry, what are you going to? Um, um, it's going to be something, right? Uh, probably back to 14 for a little bit and Dragalia Lost. Ah, uh, some Dragalia Lost. All right. I... I'm 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 looking forward to uh to playing a little more Rocket League, especially I gotta, I gotta check and see if the Rocket Pass is, is done yet. Um and then I'm I'm actually gonna be trying out RBI nineteen. Um you guys know how much I've loved RBI seventeen and, and eighteen. <laughs> Not at all. Um but I'm gonna try out RBI nineteen. I'm gonna try that out pretty soon. So make sure you Check us out on uh, social media, everybody. Uh, follow us on there and uh, follow us on NintendoFuse.com. That'd be awesome. Um, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Have a great night, guys. Right. See you all later.